Hello, welcome everyone. I'm Stephanie Chaikin. I'm the director of the Center for the Arts at NJCU. And I'd like to welcome you to the Jersey City Arts Council 2020 annual meeting. Um, we're so glad that you are here. Uh, Heather Warfel Sandler and McAdam Smith are co-chairs of the Arts Council and they have a full lineup this evening. So I'm going to turn it over to you. Hey everybody, thanks for joining us tonight. Um, I'm going to share, attempt to share my screen and uh, we have a little PowerPoint. We're gonna just kind of recap um, some of the things that we did in the past year and a few of our plans for the coming year. We have a few guests with us today, um, which is great. Uh, one of our goals going forward is, you know, just continuing to build our connections and relationships with the Jersey City arts community, the full community, but also beyond that into the general population and also with our neighbors. So I would love to just start actually with um, uh, Jeremy Johnson is here from Newark Arts. And I know that for so many of us, uh, Newark Arts is an amazing model of what we aspire to. They are about 35 years ahead of us in their, <laughs> in their development, but it's, it's, um, it's great what, what's happening in Newark. And um, Jeremy has been an awesome ally for the arts, uh, for the arts council and a comrade and a, a guide of sorts. So Jeremy, I would love for you to say a couple words if you're up for that. Heather, thank you so much. It's so great to be here. Thank you all. Uh, we are definitely neighbors. Jersey strong, right? Jersey City mm -hmm. and Newark. Absolutely. <laughs> so uh, uh, we got to stick together. Um, I just want to say hello and, and uh, extend your words of encouragement. Uh, we have so many artists that flow back and forth uh, between Jersey City and Newark at, at our, our respective festivals and gallery openings and all that we're doing. And now is a, certainly a special time for the country, a special time for cities, and artists need to be at the center of, of what's happening. And we are at the center of what's happening. So I encourage uh, the Jersey City Arts Council and all of the allies to stick together in this work for equity, for, uh, for justice. Um, artists are at the center of this, and certainly we're seeing that here in Newark in our, our sister cities across the state, but especially in Jersey City. So thank you for having me, Heather. Uh, check out our website, site newarkarts.org. Uh, we'll continue to do some cross promotions with our, our Jersey City neighbors. So we appreciate being here. Thank you so much. Thanks so much, Jeremy. And um, I appreciate you making, I know you're busy too with your grants. And so I appreciate you making time and hang, hang out for as long as you're able to. Thank you so much. Um, okay, I'm gonna try to get my PowerPoint started here. I remember how to do this. Oh, do I? Here we go. Okay, are you seeing it? Yes, we yeah. are. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. It's, it's just awkward because I can't see anyone um, as I'm talking. So um, I think we're going to start by um, just introducing you to our board of directors. So um, I'm Heather Warfel Sandler, and I've actually been involved with the Arts Council since its inception. I was uh, vice chair for the first couple of years um, when our founding chair, Robinson Holloway, who did an amazing job, you know, getting the Arts Council uh, started and grounded and started so many of our initiatives. Um, my day job is that I run the dance program at County Prep High School here in Jersey City. This is actually my 20th year um, of running that program. I also taught, uh, I was an adjunct professor of dance at NJCU for 10 years. And I've been involved in the arts community here in Jersey City for probably more than 20 years as a performer, also a little bit as a visual artist, as a volunteer. Um, so I feel uh, very connected to the arts community and I care a lot about it. And that's, you know, was a big part of my call to do this work and to serve on the Arts Council. 
I'm going to turn it over now to Mac Adam Smith, who's our co-chair, and then board members will just kind of go through the list. So when your name pops up, just tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, thanks, Heather. Uh, hi, everybody. I'm Mac Adam. Um, I'm the co-chair of the board. Uh, I've uh, lived in Jersey City for a really long time. Um, but uh, before I joined the Arts Council Board, I was uh, working with the National Guild for Community Arts Education. Uh, and what kind of got me involved in um, the Arts Council and my work here is that uh, I was working with the National Guild and uh, I kind of had a realization one day that I was uh, leaving my own community, uh, traveling across a river, uh, going into New York uh, and working to help um, other arts organizations around the country uh, better connect with their communities and do work with their communities and they were all doing really great work but I was feeling very disconnected from my own community and wanted to uh, be more active and uh, helping to promote um, the arts and uh, supporting my community so that's uh, that's why I wanted to get involved with the Arts Council um, uh, yeah but I, I, I uh, aside from that I run my own little marketing company doing primarily work with uh, a lot of nonprofits and local businesses and uh, very interested in um, the economic impact of that the arts has uh, on Jersey City. So uh, very interested in that and helping to build that community here. Uh, Mike, I don't know if you can see, I, are you- I can, on? I can, I can. Hi guys, it's Mike Grabowski. Uh Sorry, I'm actually hiding back behind a set right now. So uh, no video for me at the moment, but uh, I have been with the Arts Council for a few years now. Uh, I have lived in Jersey City for ooh, almost 20 years now. Uh, I've worked primarily these days as a broadcast lighting designer. I started uh, off off Broadway, Broadway and all that. Um, and uh, have done a lot of work with unions and uh, IOTC 829 especially. And uh, it was always a big push for me, uh, especially within the union that arts is a job, arts is work, arts is a huge economic stimulus in any given community. Uh, and that was part of what really drove me to work with the board uh, and work with uh, the Arts Council is pushing for that idea uh, that more artists need to recognize that they are contractors, they are workers, they are uh, part of a community and part of the economics of a given community. Uh, so that was always something very important to me. Uh, but yeah, primarily broadcast and lighting and uh, television stuff. For me. Thanks. Um, Natalie? Hey everyone. Uh, thank you so much for being here. My name is Natalie Brathwaite. I serve as the secretary for the Jersey City Arts Council. I've been with the council for, uh, I believe, a little over two years. Have lived in Jersey City seven, eight years. I'm losing count. All the years just seem to connect together. Um, but I uh, currently work for Fidelity Investments. Uh, where I oversee our government relations, public affairs, and community engagement work here in New Jersey and also in neighboring regions. Um, prior to that, I spent a very, very long time in nonprofit, public sector, government work. Um, and a lot of my focus has always been on fundraising, nonprofit development, strategy and planning. And so I'm very, was very passionate about the arts very passionate about this council. You know, I think I, prior to the council forming, um, you know, I had a chance to connect with so many of the co-founders um, of this council and we recognized the need for such an organization. So very interested in nonprofit development. Just want to build on what Jeremy was saying around collaborating and, you know, continuing to connect is just so important. So very happy to be here and thanks again. Thanks. Is Wycliffe on? I think I saw him. Um, Wycliffe, do you want to say a few words about yourself joining the board? Yeah. I think you're on mute. All right, sorry about that. That's okay, so, there we got him. <laughs> uh, good to see everybody. I'll uh, keep my uh, remarks brief because of the sound difficulty. Again, I'm Wycliffe Wilkinson and um, I'm the founder uh, of uh, the uh, We've Got Rhythm Foundation. 
which is a foundation here in Jersey City. I'm a treasurer for the Jersey City Arts Council, and uh, my day job, I own a financial advisory practice. But what gets me so fired up and in love with the arts is it's just inspiring the way it can affect the people and uh, inspire them to go beyond what people's uh, limitations might uh, be presented in front of them, you know, and, and kind of helps them see the world in a different way. We have such a beautiful community here. Um, it only makes sense to to do all we can to inspire that community to grow and make sure it flourishes here in our community. I've been in Jersey City about 10 years now, and I'm really proud to be treasurer of this board and be part of this community. Awesome, thanks. I think I don't think Nish Asheen is on. She runs a uh, weekly um, rally outside of City Hall, and so she might not be on yet, but when she joins, I'll have her introduce herself, and we will go to Bethany. All right. Hi, everyone. Uh, nice to see and hear you. <laughs> um, I joined the, the board last year. Um, I originally uh, came to Jersey City about 10 years ago uh, when I worked for the Jersey City Museum, when it was over on Montgomery Street. Uh, and I was there um, when the city uh, cut funding so dramatically that the museum had to uh, close and disband. Uh, prior to that, I uh, worked for Middlesex County, uh, the Cultural and Heritage Commission, uh, which is now known as the Office of Arts and History. Uh, and I ran a couple of different grant programs there uh, where I would apply for grant monies um, from Johnson & Johnson and from the New Jersey State Council on the Arts. Uh, and then oversee the redistribution of those funds uh, to local nonprofits uh, in the county. So, you know, the whole idea of outreach and making sure that we, you know, funding is spread evenly uh, was something that was drilled into my head uh, early on there. Um, as I mentioned, uh, I was in uh, at the, the museum uh, when it was disbanded. And so it really I'm really happy to be part of the board here and to be part of the mission uh, in order to reach and engage everyone uh, in our community. So thank you. Thanks, Bethany. So yeah, and, and Alvin Pettit also um, hopefully can join later. So Alvin runs the Bethune Center and he has also been on the board um, who uh, oversees the artist certification system in Jersey City. And Ashina Johnson is super active in the community. She works with the Anti-Violence Coalition and um, has worked closely with the Ward F Councilman Jermaine Robinson and also with Angela McKnight. So they are both amazing additions to our board as well. Um, uh, here we go. So the Arts Council has committees, you know, a lot of what I'm going to say tonight is things have kind of obviously taken a shift and our committees have been on a little bit of a pause. But um, when we started out, you know, we wanted a lot of feedback from the community in our first couple of years and having these uh, focus groups was a great way to both engage more people in the Arts Council's work, but also make sure that we were getting um, input from visual artists themselves, performing artists, um, and different groups uh, because we all have sort of slightly different needs. So what you see here is a list of our active committees and um, and the people who chair those committees. Joe Berlingeri chairs the architecture committee. Caitlin Halpern actually started by chairing our arts education committee and now she chairs our performing arts committee and does a ton of work um, as an advisor and a supporter of the Arts Council. So we're very grateful for her work. Jenna Geiger um, chairs the Visual Arts Committee. Jenna runs the Deep Space Gallery. Jonathan Baker has been overseeing the Literary Arts Committee. Um, Yasmin Gaskins works uh, with us to make sure that we are um, relating to and connecting with young artists age 18 to 24. And Roxy Orojo um, is from the Educational Arts Team and she has just taken over as chair of our Arts Education Committee. <clears throat> Um, before I get into my recap of last year, I just want to thank Stephanie and the NJCU team who is, is just incredible um, for hosting this meeting tonight. Last year they hosted our, our 
uh, in-person meeting, which I'm going to show you some some slides from. But um, it was very generous of them to help us with this tonight. So thanks to NJCU and Stephanie and your team. Um, we also want to thank our 2019 sponsors and our 2019 small business partners. The partner initiative was was uh, soft, very softly launched in 2019, and again was put on hold because of um, the COVID shutdown. But this was just an idea that we had to try to engage better with uh, small businesses, particularly restaurants. And um, uh, for a small $250 donation, they go on our partner list and we, we will start to um, provide promotion. Um, so these, I think it was six uh, small businesses generously joined our first uh, round of small business partners. So I really appreciate that because I know um, they're in a similar position to many of us as nonprofits. And so it was very generous of them to, to join that. And I hope that as things start to open up, we can revisit um, this partner campaign that we started. <clears throat> So I'm going to go into a little bit from last year. Our fiscal year goes January to December, but um, for the purpose of our annual meetings, we go uh, like a school year. So from the end of June to the following June. So last year um, in June, we had a really wonderful day event at NJCU's business school downtown. Um, it was uh, uh, hosted by NJCU. We started the day with a few hours of a visioning, kind of reassessing the Arts Council mission, checking in with um, people who had been working both on our board and our committees to kind of see what's working, what's not working, where do we need to go. We had about 25 um, participants in those morning workshops and breakout sessions, and there were just so many great ideas that came out of that. Um, some of, I know some people on the call tonight were there. Um, and then at the end of that day, we presented our um, our initiatives from the previous year, 2018, 2019. And there's some photos here. You'll see yourselves, um, Natalie at the chalkboard, like a teacher. <laughs> so we had a lot of, uh, we still have a lot of uh, notes to go through and a lot of ideas that were started that day um, that we're hoping to implement in the future. <clears throat> Uh, last October, we joined uh, the annual JCAST. Um, the Arts Council provided promo promotional and volunteer support. And uh, Mike Grabowski, our incredible vice chair, who's also a brilliant lighting designer, um, this is becoming a tradition that one of the ways the Arts Council supports is that Mike lends his expertise uh, to help light the headquarters art show. Um, and then myself and Bethany, uh, hosted the Family Fun Tour. So if you're not familiar with uh, the Jersey City Art and Studio Tour, um, it's mostly a walking tour, but a couple of years ago, uh, the city initiated um, these bus tours, which are really fun and they're focused. There's a pride tour, there's tours in different neighborhoods, and the tour that the Arts Council hosts is uh, family tours. We take uh, families and to kid-friendly arts um, venues throughout JCAS. And I think I have a couple of, here's a, some photos from this year's tour. Smush Gallery in the left, deep, deep Space Gallery where you see Ben Figueroa there. Uh, he did these really fun collaborative uh, music pieces with the kids. And this is, work is by Bayard Morris um, at Ayanta Space down at the bottom. <clears throat> And then our big annual event, um, which started in 2018, is the Jersey City Arts Awards. So this was the second annual um, Arts Awards. We, uh, we really love this event, and it, it has become sort of the marker for the Arts Council. Um, and I love when something is, a, is like a double, double benefit. Really, the goal of the awards is to recognize all of the amazing artists and organizations in our city and to celebrate their work and to um, and to just give them that recognition. And it also serves as our fundraiser. We had a really successful event this year and uh, we have a video, I think Anna is going to cut to the video, which was uh, put together by Chris Van Ness from This Learning. So Anna, we can show that video, yeah. 
the second annual Jersey City Arts Awards. It is the mission of the Jersey City Arts Council to honor the contributions of our artists and our arts organizations by ensuring that they remain a valued, relevant, and prominent presence across the city. The artists, which are really the lifeblood of our city, we really congratulate you and really honor you, not only tonight, but every day of the year. Gregory Yurovich. Mr. Yurovich is a sculptor, painter, graphic artist, printmaker, and inventor. Thank you to the Jersey City Arts Council for their leadership in our community. Thank you to all of you who are here tonight, and thank you for this humbling award. Matt Cali Realty Corporation sets the highest standard for philanthropic support of the arts in Jersey City, creating opportunities for artists, donating space and resources, and providing generous program sponsorship. I think you can have a world without art. I think it becomes barren, it becomes vacuous. It's not a place you want to live in. Jersey City Theater Center. JCTC produces theater, dance, visual arts, spoken word, and more, providing a platform for both international artists as well as those in the lesser served pockets of our community. And the most important for supporting each other and making sure that we have one city, one people. Our diversity is the most beautiful thing we have. Duda and Catherine, the creative directors of the Jersey City Youth Mural Arts Program. To win this game, they force us to play. One must know the rules were meant to be questioned, bent and broken in here. Architecture Award goes to FX Collaborative for the Statue of Liberty Museum. As much as being accomplished professionals and, and celebrating the importance of that here in Jersey City, so much of it comes back to what we do as learners. The inimitable Nugent Smith. He is a first generation Caribbean American interdisciplinary artist and educator living right here in the city. His highly acclaimed work can be seen around the world. Lillian Bustle. She is a burlesque performer, producer, public speaker, self described, gleeful, loud mouth about body positivity. I've worked in Jersey City for 36 years. I love Jersey City and Hudson County. Homegrown group, they strive to shatter the myth that you have to be rich and famous to make a difference. My name is Craze, I'm from PDX Craze. One half of that, one half of Got Love Foundation where we clean up parks and give back to the community. Congratulations to everybody that's here. We all got an award, we're here. Awesome. Sorry, so I was cutting back. So yeah, Chris did a great job putting together those highlights from the evening. And I, the, as the awards grow, um, we really feel like this is a great way to bring attention to um, Jersey City and to all the many different things we do. We, we had some really good publicity. We had a great crowd this year. And I think um, as more groups across the state become aware of the awards, it'll, it'll uh, be an event that continues to grow. Um, speaking of our, our presence in the state, I wanted to um, introduce Anne Marie Miller from Art Pride, who generously also um, stopped in tonight to just uh, join us. And, and she has been an amazing support for the Arts Council. If you know Art Pride, you know all of the things that they have done for artists across the state. They're an amazing uh, advocacy group. And Anne Marie has always made herself available when I'm figuring things out. And um, so Anne Marie, if you wanna just say hello, I would love that. Uh, let me just unmute you. Let's see. Uh, Sabrina, maybe you can, there we go. Okay. All right. Thank you. This is like, that was an awesome video, by the way. Thanks. Oh. Um, I'm, it's funny, I'm splitting myself between two computers tonight. It's like when it rains, it pours. I'd love to be able to sit here, but my local arts council is doing an artist meetup on the other computer. Uh, they're using my Zoom on that. So um, I, I, I'm a little late here and, and really can't stay, but I just wanted to encourage all of you and thank you, Heather. And uh, I see so many familiar faces in the gallery view, um, Bethany and Jeremy and uh, Stephanie and it's and I don't see them all but um, uh, 
keep at it. You guys are doing an amazing job uh, in terms of building goodwill for the arts. Um, you have, there are, you're setting an example for the rest of the state. Um, don't give up. Um, advocacy takes uh, time. Um, it doesn't ever end. Um, <laughs> and, um, and yet, you know, you are bringing so much to the city um, that's already been recognized in so many ways. And, uh, you know, that's, that good work will only continue. Um, keep keep um, spreading your, the word um, uh, and, and also emphasizing the way the arts, you know, if people don't see them, like, because they're not going out as much, um, you, you're all doing some incredibly excellent virtual programming. I've been stopping in to see um, Olga's programming and, and, um, and the amount of work that's being shared, um, you know, mm -hmm. that it can only build goodwill over time, reminding people how much the arts are connected to everything else that they do. Thank you so much. Thanks, Anne-Marie, for making the time to, to join us. Really appreciate it. Nice Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so one of the initiatives that we started uh, two years ago is the Jersey City Poetry Festival. And, and this was started by our Literary Arts Committee, um, largely uh, Robinson Holloway and Susan Justiniano, who were both on the board at that time, and the whole Literary Arts Committee. And um, as the Arts Council is, has been moving away from programming and more towards advocacy work and support work, uh, we decided that um, that it would be good to to turn this over to a group that's more specialized in the beautiful art of writing and poetry. So Jersey City Writers will be taking over the, the Poetry Festival going forward. Unfortunately, again, this year they had an amazing uh, plan. I saw Rachel shared it with me um, and things got turned upside down, but they're going to forge ahead. So um, Rachel, if you want to say a couple of words about your plans with the Poetry Festival, if we could spotlight Rachel Poy. Can you guys hear me? Yes? Yes. Oh, hey, how you doing? Thank you for having me tonight, Heather. Yeah. Um, yes, we are in the planning stages to put our poetry festival back on. Um, we were really disappointed that we had to cancel it due to the lockdown. So we're looking to bring it back this fall. Um, what our big concept is to um, put it in one place and have all the events in one place and make sure it touches every single part of Jersey City with every different kind of poet that you could possibly imagine. So uh, stay tuned. As soon as I have something a little bit more um, solid, I'll definitely let you guys know. Meanwhile, I'm going to put my information here in the chat. Do y'all see it? So feel free to contact me if you'd like to even get involved, volunteer with us, or if you'd like to know more about Jersey City Writers. FYI, we do do about 20 events each month, workshops, uh, prompt nights, readings, you name it. So just let me know. And thank you so much, Heather, and thank you, everybody. Thanks, Rachel. <clears throat> Um, the Art 150, many of you have probably been to 150 Bay Street on the JCAS tours. There are a lot of artists um, already working in there. And uh, the Arts Council, this also was started a couple of years ago, um, that there's a, a, there was a floor available and they are now making that Art 150 where there will be f more than 50 uh, artist studio spaces and also a central gallery space and um, office space that will be shared by the Arts Council, Pro Arts and Art Fair 14C. So this is really uh, exciting. The opening of the space is currently scheduled for September and I believe there are still um, studio spaces that have not yet been reserved. So if you go to Art 150, we'll put the uh, link in the chat later. Um, there's an application and you can fill that out if you're looking for studio space starting in September. <clears throat> and these are, this is just a, a short list of, um, you know, different ways that the Arts Council has supported the arts community here. Um, letters of support for different organizations. 
doing promotion. We were working with the online cal calendar. And then in these past few months, we moved to um, newsletters. There's a form on our website and that goes out in our newsletters if you want us to share your um, virtual events that you're having. Um, we share events on our social media. We also started a couple of resource lists, uh, an arts education list and a list of rentable rehearsal space throughout the city. This year, uh, for the second year, we participated in the Hudson County Chamber of Commerce's Hudson Gives program. And that was a wonderful way to both raise money for the Arts Council and also connect with um, that group. A lot of what we do is networking. So almost every day there's an email of, hey, do you know someone who does this? And then we you know, connect the dots and, and try to help make things happen. We are a partner with NJCU and the Office of Cultural Affairs on the cultural assets map. Um, and that if, is at Cultural Assets JC. I think that most of you are on that map. If you're not, you should be. So go there and uh, fill out the form. And I may as well say while we say that, fill out your census because the data from the census uh, can help us um, just identify needs in the arts and look for uh, ways to connect with the whole community. Um, this year we had uh, unanimous approval from city council to move forward with the arts trust referendum, which we are going to get to when we talk about the coming year's plans. Um, and then other things we do is just community um, organization advocacy. So this was just one example. Um, there was uh, there's an arts requirement for development in the Padna district and there was some confusion and question of how that would be implemented. So we were able to work with that community organization and make sure that, that everyone was fulfilling their commitments. Um, and that's something that we'd like to, to keep doing. So if something like that arises in your neighborhood, let us know. Um, when COVID-19 came, we, we refocused like so many of us did. We've been doing these arts calls every Tuesday with NJCU, Cultural Affairs and Rising Tide um, as a way of connecting and sharing resources. And at jerseycityartscouncil.org, you'll see a tab that has um, links for other kinds of COVID-19 um, support and resources. One of those being um, the arts relief grants. So um, we met with Mayor Phillip in late May, and it was actually less than a week after our meeting that he announced um, that he would dedicate $250,000 to uh, arts relief grants. We're, we are um, working with the Jersey City Economic Development Corporation to implement these grants. Um, it was done rather quickly because of the urgency of the situation. So we divided it up that uh, the Arts Council is overseeing $100,000 of grants for small organizations, groups, and individual artists. And the Jersey City um, EDC is overseeing $150,000 for arts program grants, which are probably more suitable for those of you who run bigger organizations. Those grants are $10,000 to $15,000. Um, the deadline is tomorrow night. So if you have not yet applied for either, um, there's the links down there and we'll put those in the chat as well. Please do so. Um, even if you're not sure, do I fit into this? Just apply, it doesn't hurt to apply. Um, this is really unprecedented. Uh, Jersey City has never really, you know, I, I know that some of our organizations have access to other grants, whether it's nonprofit grants or community grants, but this, this is really the first time that the city designated this money is for the arts. And so we really are hoping that this is the beginning of, um, you know, a repeated uh, effort to serve our arts community directly with funding. <clears throat> and then some of the less fun stuff just on the on the internal side to update you, we, we did a little revising of our bylaws. We used to be a board of trustees. Now we're a board of directors. And we also added the um, structure of having a co-chair, which was um, great pro arts, um, kind of talked us through how they do it. And it seemed to make sense while we're still developing. There's so much work um, for the board and for the chair. So this has been great. And Mac Adam has been an amazing <laughs> help as my new co-chair. 
Um, we have new board members are Bethany Wycliffe and Mac Adam. We were able to increase our budget by 2000%, which sounds crazy, but it's true. Um, you know, we're, we're just getting started. And so that, that was really a big boost for us. And we hope to continue with that. Uh, we are move, we're working with Provident for our banking and we implemented some new guidelines for our committee and um, programs and connected with uh, a few other ways to generate ongoing uh, revenue. Um, so moving forward, looking now ahead at 2020, our, our Jersey City Arts Awards nominations are open. So I'm gonna let Bethany um, talk a little bit about that. Sure. Um, so this is our third year of doing uh, these awards. Uh, we do not know uh, if in December we will be able to have an in-person uh, fundraiser and celebration. Uh, so the details for that are TBD, uh, but fingers crossed. Uh, so uh, thank you to Mac Adam and to Mike, uh, my fellow board members, uh, for getting the nominations up on our website uh, this afternoon. So right after we conclude this meeting, I hope everyone goes right over to the Arts Council website, jerseycityartscouncil.org, uh, and submits at least one nomination. Uh, in addition to um, our 13 uh, categories that are the traditional ones, um, Medici, Legacy, Leadership, Architecture, Design, uh, Arts Education, Film and TV, Literary Arts, Performing Arts, Public Art, Visual Art and Fine Art, uh, Young Artists and Arts Organizations, uh, we have the, um, I guess it's biannual uh, category of Poet Laureate that is open. Um, and this person uh, will compose poems um, and different verses for special events and occasions. Um, and that really promotes a greater understanding and appreciation um, of poetry. Um, and so we're really excited uh, to see what, what that brings about into um, our field. So the nomination are open uh, as of today. Our goal was July 1, so we're a day early. Uh, and they will be closing September 1. So, Thanks, any other Stephanie. questions? Yeah, just go to the Arts Council website. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah, so we um, initiated the Poet Laureate position with the City of Jersey City uh, a couple of years ago, and you're seeing here uh, Rashad Wright, who was our first, the city's first official Poet Laureate. Um, Christine from Cultural Affairs, I think, is on the call, and I'm going to let Christine say a few more words about the Poet Laureate position. Sure. Thanks, Heather. Um, I think this, everybody can agree that this first cycle of having first official Poet Laureate has been a wonderful experience. Rashad is an incredible poet and community activist. He's brought so much to this role. And what I think is really important and exciting about having a Poet Laureate here in Jersey City is the opportunities around um, having an arts voice, and a representative, and a representative that can come forward in a creative way to express um, you know, feelings of the moment, very, very current emotions in the moment, and to help uh, build out dynamic presentations. So Rashad has, uh, and I know a lot of you know this, but been very active in terms of programming that we've had through the city and also through many of your events representing as the Poet Laureate. And it's also great to see poetry being represented um, on the city level from the perspective of statewide uh, visibility that that brings to our writers and creatives and, and poets in particular, um, and also just to make sure we have a creative voice representing where possible. So as we move into this next round of nominations, I just, I know he's not here at the moment, or I don't think he is, but I just want to say uh, we've loved working with Rashad. Uh, my office been a point of contact 
through uh, the last two years and will continue to be so. And then we just, you know, we, we are aiming to be flexible around what this role brings to the table to be creative and to explore new ways of engaging with the poet laureate, um, depending on you know, what, what the poet that's chosen brings to the table. So that could be uh, presenting at events that are held at City Hall, that could be supporting new programs made available to the city at large, um, or the uh, publishing or amplifying um, of individual poems that are written through the role of the Poet Laureate. So I look forward to seeing the names that the community brings forward because I know there's a lot of talent here in Jersey City. And I think this is a, a wonderful opportunity for our writers and poets. And, uh, and I'm, I really thank the Arts Council for pushing this initiative forward and for uh, helping us find a great poet. Thanks, Christine. Thanks for jumping in. Yeah, so so the Arts Council will work with the city um, off of your nomination. So please uh, nominate your favorite poets. Um, so we have a great uh, new initiative that we're just starting, and and this is one of the one of the things I love about doing this work is when things kind of come about organically and the creative part being that I am an artist. Um, so Shimona Stokes is a local artist who um, initiated this uh, idea. She's selling a piece of work and wanted to donate um, some of the profit to a scholarship fund. So I'm gonna turn this over to Shimona and let her introduce herself. And um, this was her wonderful idea. We are now going to partner up. Can we uh, spotlight Shimona? Hey, everyone. Can you hear me? Yep. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks, Heather. Um, nice to meet everybody. Uh, my name's Shimona, and I'm a Jersey City artist. I've been here for about eight years, and I primarily work in ceramics and sculpture. And the, the image you see here was a traveling installation that I made about a year ago. And the centerpiece was, uh, you can't really see it, but it's this giant unicorn sphinx. And it was a nightlight that I had as a child. And what we did was we upscaled it at Mana Contemporary. And this was actually a Kickstarter project. So because it was crowdfunded, um, I just feel like I wanted to kind of share the love because everyone helped me build it. So it's right now, it's sitting in my living room. So I had the idea of just trying to find a home for it right now. Um, and so I've just started to email to different people and I put this uh, idea together with Heather, just, um, you know, finding a, a home for it in Jersey City or Newark or really anywhere here. Um, and I've decided to call it the Alice Stokes Paul Grant for Women in the Arts. And just like a few weeks ago, I found out that one of the women that was one of the original suffragettes that um, helped ratify the 19th Amendment, she is like a really distant um, ancestor of mine. So I wanted to name it after her because I'd love for any money that comes from the sales of this sculpture to go to just like young women in the arts, maybe ages 17 to 21, because when I went to school, I couldn't have afforded going to art school, you know, unless it was for these scholarships and grants. So um, hopefully we can find it a home. So if anybody has any ideas, um, I'm all ears. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Thanks, Shimona. Yeah, so so we're just we just started this idea. Um, Shimona was showing the piece at Mana, but um, a couple of ways that that you guys might help if you know someone who has a large space that might be looking for a large sculpture piece. Um, we're at Jersey City Arts Council at Gmail, and we can connect you with Shimona. And then. Um, we are going to coordinate this new grant that will um, help young women um, pursue an education in the arts. And so when that application is open, we will certainly share that. And we're hoping that this is the beginning of an ongoing um, annual grant that we can start and, and get support from um, going forward. So I really am appreciative of Shimona for initiating that. Um, this year, we are also going to coordinate the film scramble. This is an idea that our film and t TV committee had um, a couple of years ago, and we've been um, working on finding the, the best uh, avenue to produce it. And Michelle Servino from the Golden Door Film Festival is now taking that over and working on coordinating that with the Golden Door Festival. 
they are still obviously figuring out how that festival will take place. So stay tuned for more on that um, going forward. And then again, just some internal goals, just organizational goals. We are trying to continue our um, fundraising so that we can hire a communications coordinator and also hope, hoping by 2021 to have a part-time executive director. Um, you know, the place that we find ourselves in now is that there's so many great initiatives have been laid down, um, but it's a lot of work. It's really a full-time job. So um, we want to make sure that things are done uh, well and done consistently and transparently. And so we really need uh, staff for that. So that's one of our um, major goals for the coming year. Um, continuing to advocate for emergency arts funding, depending on however long this um, COVID-19 and all the repercussions last. That's something that we're committed to doing. Um, we also want to look at our lines of communication, both with the arts community and also, um, as I said, outside of the arts community. Uh, this is something that I think is going to be really important when we're looking to the community to support the arts referendum, which we'll talk about in a moment. Um, and also just in general to create a better sense of um, support throughout the community and educating people about how the arts play into the economy, how the arts play into education, how they play into our everyday lives. Not everyone um, has a sense of that. And so that's something really important to us. Uh, we're starting, I'm joining the JC Together meeting in a couple of weeks. And so we're just starting that way to try to um, speak to the other um, non-arts organizations across the city and um, start to build those communication lines. Um, and then we are moving forward with the Arts Trust and, and Referendum. I do wanna share some information um, on that because I know that, it, that things have been up in the air and it's been unclear. So uh, the referendum was approved in, uh, I think it was February by city council, but then when the shutdown came, um, the mayor recommended postponing until 2021. So the mayor and the Arts Council are both committed to the referendum fully, but um, at this time feel like postponing may be a better option. Um, through these arts calls on Tuesdays, we had put together um, a group of arts uh, organization leaders and artists to kind of start thinking about messaging and what that looks like, how we get this referendum to pass. Um, and then that group, uh, after some conversations, decided that it was important to gather more information about the timing of the referendum and how um, and when when will be the best time. So right now there's a survey and I have the link. If someone has it to throw in the chat, please do. And, and if not, I'll put it in when we wrap up the PowerPoint. Um, there's a survey that asks, um, you know, for uh, to express your level of interest this year. Um, but either way, whether we go forward this year or next year, it will take the entire arts community to, um, to get on board and volunteer and spread the word and connect with the community to help that pass. And the Arts Trust um, would be laid out similarly to the um, open space um, trust that was initiated several years ago. And so that's been a model. Um, for how we do that. I'm just going to finish the PowerPoint so I can come back to see you all and then we'll have a little conversation. just want to thank again um, NJCU and um, thank you to, uh, to all the artists and everyone for joining these calls every week and continuing to connect and support one another. Um, I'll just, I won't read to you. I am a teacher, but I won't. <laughs> <clears throat> So I'm just gonna come back so we can chat a little bit. Um, thanks so much for listening. So we also, the Arts Council has also done um, <clears throat> many, um, court, we do quarterly community meetings where we check in that also we haven't, um, we've been doing these every Tuesday. But um, at the end of those, we do what called, we call the live bulletin board. So if you have uh, a question for the Arts Council, a comment, or something that you personally want to share with, um, with the arts community, we can spend our last uh, 10 minutes or so um, 
on that. So maybe you can raise your hand and Sabrina can facilitate if you, if you have a question or comment. If you look at the bottom of your screen, there is a participants button. If you click that, it'll open the participants window where you should see a blue hand button. If you click that, that'll raise your hand for us and let us know that you want to participate. Awesome. It's a great time. If, if anyone's doing uh, any virtual programming that you want to share, please um, feel free to to mention that. Also, um, Alvin is here and he could introduce himself. Okay, great. Yeah, Alvin. Can you hear me? Yep. Mm -hmm. Hi. Hello. Hey, Alvin. Hi, everybody. So I'm Alvin Pettit of the Bethune Center, director of the Mary McLeod Bethune Life Center in Greenville out on 140 MLK Drive, for those of you that don't already know. Uh, we also do a lot of art programs there. Um, we've been at a little bit of a standstill for the last couple months due to uh, obviously the lockdown and coronavirus uh, precautions. But, you know, hopefully we're trying to soon get back in the swing of things. And in the downtown, we've actually been, during the downtime, we've actually been using that time to do upgrades and renovations of the center that, you know, the, the, the quiet has kind of allowed us to, to get done. So we're building a, a new theater area in there where we've been installing new comfortable theater seating, uh, small seating, um, it's, it's a black box theater. So it has right now seats, seats about 25 or 30 people. And we've been installing new comfortable seatings for that, uh, along with surround sound and, you know, kind of giving it the works. We actually got in new, this is not arts related, but we've actually installed some new uh, fitness equipment as well as, you know, weights and other uh, fitness, other fitness um, equipment to, for our exercise room and our uh, workout studios as well. So any of you that are interested in doing any type of arts programs, Hopefully when we open up, please get into contact with me or call the center, uh, follow us on Facebook and Instagram. And we look forward to working with, we've done a lot of poetry readings there. We've done, um, we, we used to work with, hopefully we'll work with again with Michelle Sorvino, who was hosting our indie film night. So we'd love to bring that back. Hopefully we can start with bringing some of these small programs back before we start with large events again, but stuff like indie film night was perfect because you can still social distance and do it as soon as um, you know, we get to go ahead to start opening up, up on some of that stuff again. Uh, as a matter of fact, I was trying to come in on the, uh, the lady who was talking about, she has a sculpture that she's looking for a home for. Yeah, that's our um, Shimona. We just started that um, initiatives and she's going to donate the proceeds and uh, coordinate a grant with us. So um, she's, she has a, a large sculpture. Yeah, I can, we can connect. Yeah, I'm just curious. I mean, I can't make any promises, but you know, we do have places, some area for that we take sculptures. So, I mean, we're not doing any openings at the current time, but I would like to get the scales and the dimension and just have a look at it, you know, to see what it is. Yeah, we are. We will put up. Actually, I don't have a link yet, but but Shimona did write up a nice um, press release for that. So I'm going to put that on our website. Um, so if anyone else here also has. Um, you know, possible uh, spaces in mind or buyers in mind for that, that would be great. Currently, I'm also um, taking some submissions for uh, some new artwork because we're also using the time to change some of our gallery walls, taking some work down and putting some new work up. And I was, we haven't got the flyer done yet. I'm trying to, I'm in the process of doing that. A little short staff right now, but we're trying to get that out. Uh, and I want to do a theme of artwork for kind of, we call it Black Art Matters. So um, I want to do it for basically something that speaks to a lot of the current uh, situation going on today. And I'm looking for something that, uh, you know, looks from all, possibly all perspectives. So whether you agree with the movement, disagree with the movement, whatever your work reflects, I want something that kind of opens up the conversation to all the different perspectives of what's going on and work on that subject matter. So we okay. just put out, we just recently just, you know, I haven't put the flyer out yet, but since I have some people here from the arts community, I'm just putting it out verbally right now. Thanks, so, Alvin. I don't know, we, we can't do an opening date yet because we don't really know what is going to, you know, when we're going to be allowed to to start taking in 
crowds again and stuff, but at least we can start collecting the work whenever it starts to get submitted and get, get the show hung. Great. Thanks, Alvin. It looks like okay. Caitlin has her hand up. Uh, okay, go ahead, Caitlin. Hi, everybody. Um, there are a couple things going on at the gallery that uh, at Smush Gallery, which I run up by Journal Square, that I just wanted to hit. Um, one is that today is officially the deadline for our call for art for the zine show, which is going up in fall 2020. Um, but if this is the first you're hearing of it, or if like life kind of got on top of you and you need a couple of extra days, then um, please take it. We would just love to see your zines and include those in the show. Um, I'm going to put a link to that in the chat. And then we have a couple of things going on that are um, rooted in the anti-racist work that the gallery is advancing. One is that there's a weekly meeting Thursday for white identifying people who are looking for support in undoing uh, white supremacy. And we meet on Zoom, um, 6 to 7.30. It's free, it's facilitated, and um, that's run between Smush Gallery and um, B'nai Jacob with Rabbi Bronwyn. So that's happening. And then we're also putting together a steering committee of um, BIPOC identifying artists and art enthusiasts um, who are interested in leveraging that particular aspect of their identity toward um, actionable anti-racism that we can put into practice through the gallery. Um, again, like all that stuff is on our website and I'll put the link to that in the chat, um, but it would be really nice um, if you are interested or know somebody who might be interested in, in any of those things um, to see you around. And then um, just also to let you know that we're about to go into our summer residency program which means that uh, individual artists are gonna have the use of the space and we'll be letting you know a little bit about what they're up to, but uh, the gallery will go a little bit quiet um, starting soon, fingers crossed. Boy, would it be nice if the gallery went quiet soon um, so that I could get a little bit of a, of a rest, but um, we'll see you back in the fall for all kinds of good stuff. Thanks. Thanks, Caitlin. Um, I want to, in the chat, Diane Dragone um, has shared something uh, that's happening at the Kennedy Dancers. So take a look in the chat. Side note, Diane Dragone gave me my first job uh, dancing at the Kennedy Dancers when I moved to Jersey City. So I, I love the, uh, the history and the relationships um, in the community. So check that out in the chat. And I see Cheryl Murphy has her hand up. Cheryl here. Greetings. Yes, it is Cheryl D.B., Jersey City Caribbean Carnival. Hey, Cheryl. Greetings, family, arts family of Jersey City, Hudson County, as well as Texas County. I hear my Jeremy guy is on the line. <laughs> I just wanted to inform everyone and invite everyone that Jersey City Carnival, as you know, is celebrating 25 years in Jersey City. Unfortunately, we won't be live going down Montgomery Street down to the festival downtown will be going virtual on saturday july 25th 2020 from 2 to 6 on zoom so i invite everyone to go to our facebook page jersey city caribbean carnival and zoom and sign up and come and participate with us and we also have it open for any artists that would like to come participate you can send us a pre-recorded 30 minute to a minute Welcome, greeting, wishing us well for 25 years. And thank you for the time. And I'm looking forward to seeing us all gathering together and celebrating Caribbean heritage in Jersey City, Hudson County, Essex County, around the world. Thank you. Thanks, Cheryl. We have, your, we have the info about that. We'll be putting that in, out in a newsletter um, closer to the, to the event date. Awesome. Thank yeah. you so much. Yeah, thanks everyone. Um, so yeah, we're, we'll stay on a few extra minutes so you can breeze through the chat. There's lots of good links in there. Again, there's the survey um, about the referendum and I know that's a big topic and we only got a couple minutes to it, but as, um, as we go forward, please email the Arts Council if you have questions about the logistics of that. And um, uh, you can also re reach us through Facebook and we will um, do our best to keep you updated um, as that develops. Uh, I want to thank um, everyone who popped in, all of you, individual artists, arts leaders, um, Jeremy and Amory, who took time away from their important organizational work to, to join us. And, um, you know, it, 
the community here is why we do what we do. So um, thanks for being here. And especially to Stephanie and the NJCU team, I'm gonna let um, Stephanie wrap it up. I don't know if she has any announcements on her end. Thank you so much, Heather. You are amazing. And McAdam, we are, our hearts are with you. So thank you very much. Um, the one announcement I have is that we've been having these great Tuesday art calls. Um, for July, we're going to go to bi-weekly. So we'll take a little bit of a break, but we're still here. Um, July 14th and July 28th are the days of our call. And so we'll all have it up on our websites. Um, thank you very much. Thanks so much. Well, again, we'll stay on for two more minutes. So if you want to copy anything from the chat.